I've lived here for 42 years in the same spot. I look out my kitchen window, which where the lake is in front of me. It's just like becoming a, a straight down cliff, like there's no gradual shoreline anymore. And where areas where there's no rock, it just continues coming inward towards, you know, like I say, to my house. A few years ago, when the water level was coming up, it was starting to erode the land right into my back step. Before the diking, that erosion came right up, right up to here. It's affected by the high water because the high water starts uh, eroding the land. It's sad and I don't really know how to explain it to express how I'm feeling about it. Because a lot of the islands that used to be out there, can't see them anymore. That's how high the water is. That was one of the most outstanding features of this territory was all the beaches. This was all covered in sand and this was a paradise out here. And it doesn't look like very much nowadays. For me, it's an eyesore. There's so much more you can do on a, on a beach as compared to a rock like this. A lot of these trees are starting to fall over here along the shore because of the waves that the waves go way up here when it's when, when we have a, a strong wind from the south these, these waves will go right into the trees here and it take erode some of this land. Every every year it goes farther inland here and the, these trees have now fallen over. How many trees do you think have fallen into the waters around high, where hydro is going? Oh millions. Yeah this is uh, what I'm calling lateral erosion. Um, but the land is eroding uphill. And the ground is calving to what you see on the shoreline. Very similar. Now, you got to think, what do uh, the youth of today and the future, gen what, what are they going to do with shoreline like this? You can't do nothing with this. You can't really hunt, trap, or, or fish off of it, because, I mean, it'd be a mistake, because your equipment, your own life would be in danger. You have to know how to climb the trap along the shoreline there with all the debris and erosion happening. You probably have to be a monkey to tra trap along the shoreline. And... They said it was an act of God and a Noma Hydro. How can it be an act of God when they're the ones controlling all of their yeah. systems all over Manitoba these yeah. days, eh? There's no longer any uh, natural fluctuation here. Hydro in the province will argue differently, but they, it's a man-made man controlled lake. When the lake is fluctuated, that's one thing, but when you get wave action in with that, uh, you'll see some of the erosion, it's just, it's just a disaster. And that's ongoing every year, every day of every year. I mean, I'm sure it could take care of itself if you leave it alone, but she's constantly being pummeled every single day of the year just due to the artificial operation of the lake. And you see the discoloration of the water? This is constant because of the, the clay and the organics but you get behind some of these islands when the waves are going and you'll actually see plumes of clay washing off the, the shore. We went up to Eight Mile Channel back in 2002 when I started fishing. There used to be about 10, 12 feet of water in that area. Always caught pickerel there. Uh, now we're lucky to have two or three feet of water there. That piece of land from Two Mile to Warren's Landing, is it still going to exist next 50? hundred years. In some point in time that whole patch of land is going to be eroded. Because of all the erosion of the land, there is a lot of debris in the lake from the trees that have fallen in. Looking at every single tree here, within your lifetime they will all end up in the water if things don't change. 
they get wet on one side and then the other side they just stick up. You can't, you can't see them, eh? They go up and down. You know, when you're out in the lake and when you're going full, full speed, when you hit a log, then you're the one that's going to pay for it. And it's, and it's not your fault that all the sticks are floating around. What future does my, uh, do my sons have? Or my grandsons, for that matter? With the erosion along the shoreline, we end up catching these trees and deadheads there. And my boys asked me, what is, what is this? I thought we came for fish, not trees or all. There was one guy here and he hit a log. He fell out of his boat and he drowned it there. So that a young man's life, that's pretty sad. And all through the lake, I mean, there's uh, nobody's really counted, but there's been hundreds of islands gone. Right in front of us, what used to be an island is now just a rock pile. And I mean, it's a hazard for somebody who wouldn't know it's, it's there. We had a cruise clean up the shoreline. Like Hydro always says, well, we've cleaned up the shore. Well, one, you've stopped doing that. And two, even when you clean it up, the erosion effects are so severe, it doesn't take long. There's still uh, what's falling trees and debris on the shoreline, not four years later. So, I mean, this is a cleaned up shoreline. So if Hydro, if you ever hear, talk to them or you see any of their information, say they're working with the communities cleaning up, they want to paint a pretty picture in your head, but this is the reality. We just didn't want to have a make work project. Guys work for a couple of weeks and we clean up some trees. What we are hoping through time, talking with Hydro is, yeah, we'll start doing the cleanup, but an important factor is the water management. And that's one area Hydro adamantly, they didn't want to discuss. They need to operate responsibly. And the real problem is the water management. All right, come over here. Whoa, I'm gonna go sliding. You got, you got me? Okay. Okay, here's what we we used to love doing: picking these uh, seagull eggs, turn eggs. They're very tasty. Now look where they have to nest. You know, Mother Nature takes care of itself, but if you're continuously daily beating her up, she, she, it's hard to recover. And it's, I still think it can recover, but you gotta, you know, you, you gotta find a balance here. I seriously think they fell asleep. They made a mistake. Somebody didn't do their job. Planto Baidro is uh, addicted to dams and drunk on water. 